putting this as a definitive list makes me feel <laughs> incredibly nervous, but I feel like it's time. <laughs> Hello friends! So the other day I realised I have never done a uh, My Favourite Books video, ever. <laughs> I've never done it in the history of my channel. I've only ever done like best books of the year, but I thought it was time I give you a definitive list of my top 25 books ever. <laughs> it's about time! Putting this list together was actually easier than I thought. I feel pretty confident in my picks. Of course, with anything like this, there'll be a comment. It's like, why don't you put this book in there? Why don't you put this book in there? And I'll be like, oh shit, yeah, you're right. <laughs> but at the moment, I feel confident in my choices. And the way that we're gonna do this is I haven't ranked them from like 25 to one, because that would be too difficult. But what I have done is we've got three kind of tiers. We've got 25 to 16, 15 to six, and then the top five. So I've been able to rank it like that. I have got my top five books of all time and like the tiers kind of separating them. Should we just get into it? I don't really know what to do. This is, I just guess, a video of my top recommendations. Some of these will be books I haven't spoken about in a long time because they're books I read a long time ago. There might be books you don't even know that I've read or loved and some will be more recent additions. So shall we just get into it? I feel like, I don't know if you can tell, I feel nervous. Let's just begin. So we'll start at the bottom and work our way up. So this is the 25 to 16 <laughs> number book. So it's not ranked within this, um, but yeah, this is the first tier. So first book I wanna mention is The Tea Dragon Society by Kate O'Neill. I still haven't read the next two in this series because it's so precious and incredible. I wanna like keep it for the perfect day. But basically you're following these like tea dragons who like help brew tea. There's a different types. And it's just the most gorgeous graphic novel you've ever seen. Like literally a hug in a book. I need to reread this. Maybe I'll just like reread this like right now. <laughs> found family, fantastical little magical creatures, and I love it. I can't wait to read this with my kids one day. I genuinely think that. Like, I think about when I'm reading it, like, oh my god, imagine a little kid looking at little dear. It's very strange. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just so wholesome, so beautiful, and you've got kind of this friendship between these two characters as well. So yeah, I had to put this on here. I find that I prefer cute graphic novels. I like graphic novels that are cute, wholesome, happy. And so if you ever have any recommendations for that, let a girl know. Oh my gosh, no, I've bent this book. Oh shit. <laughs> well, then we have the only non-fiction book on this list. It was tough. I almost put another one on here. I almost put The Five by Hallie Rubenhold, but it didn't quite make it. But this is the only non-fiction. It's one I read a super long time ago and it is Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay. So this is a series of essays from Roxane Gay. It's set into sections. We've got me, gender and sexuality, race and entertainment, politics, gender and race, and back to me. And I just thought this was so insightful, so interesting. It's such uh, an, a great look at intersectional feminism. But you know, the difficulties of sometimes being a feminist whilst also having these ingrained societal perceptions. I never highlight, but I highlighted a lot in this book. And this is actually one I would really love to reread. I just thought it was so interesting. I felt like when I was reading it, I opened my eyes. And I always say my favorite essay in this is the one where she talks about her love for Scrabble. I love it. Like, <laughs> I love the essay about Scrabble in this. I found it so interesting. Then we have a new edition. This is The Broken Girls by Simone St. James. This is a, just a pretty simple kind of mystery. We have these two timelines, one in the present day, a woman whose sister was murdered about 20 years ago, I think, and found on the grounds of this old school. And then we also follow perspectives of these girls who went to the school when it was happening. And in the present day timeline, again, a body has just been found on the school grounds again. And I just loved this. I loved the uh, relationships between some of the girls in this. I found the way that the mystery unfurled was so interesting. I thought the writing was incredible. It really made me fall in love with Simone St. James's writing. And I've been wanting to try more from her ever since. And I always say there's, less, there's like a little bit of speculativeness. Is the camera not focused again? What is going on with you? What has happened? <laughs> it's like having a job working 24 seven for two days on the trot. Yeah, there's always a little bit of speculativeness to these books. There's always a little bit of like something lurking. And I just loved that. I wasn't expecting that because so often a book promises me spooky vibes, ghosty vibes. And yet then at the end it's like, oh, it was nothing. 
oh, you know, whereas this, there's still a little bit of mm, throughout the book, you know, a little bit of, is there a ghost? Is there a little, you know. But it's not overpowering, it's not really what the book's about. But I love that. I love a bit of supernatural speculativeness outside our worldness. So yes, cannot wait to read more Simone St. James. Another one from last year was Jade Legacy by Fonda Lee. This is the last in the Green Moon saga. We're following this family who are like, uh, it's kind of like a mafia fantasy. And this family are one of the most powerful families of the city. And this book, <laughs> don't, don't even look at me, don't even look at me. Trauma, family trauma generational trauma, family trauma. You know, generational trauma. Generational trauma. Generational trauma. Yeah. Trauma. 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 By this book, you have been with this family for so long. You have cried. You have been emotionally damaged. And this book also takes place over the course of, I think about like 15 years, I wanna say at least. It's a long time. And I just, I haven't read a lot of fantasy series to the end, especially like adult high fantasy, like this is kind of intimidating to me. But by the end, <laughs> the level of detail that you are immersed in with this book, and the level of connection you have to the family, and to everything that's gone on, and like the way that things happen in this book, that the roots were laid of in the first book, I just thought this was an incredible combination of what was a really great series. I didn't love the first in the series. I think I gave it a 3.5. So I liked it, but I didn't love it. Whereas Jade War got a 4.5 and this got a five. I just like, I loved it. I read it in like two days as well and it's really long. I just thought it was incredible. I thought it was such an amazing feat of writing. Then we have one of the first murder mysteries I ever read and the first Agatha Christie I ever read and that is Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. I am about to do a reread of this pretty soon. I think I've got to read one more in the Poro series and then this comes up and I'll do a reread. I think this is a perfect murder mystery. I think it's a perfect murder mystery. So there's a murder that happens on the Orient Express on this train. Poro is there and the train is snowed in, as you can see, there's, the train is stuck. So Poro's like, I'm gonna find out who did this. A, a big part of Poro figuring it out is, I always say, a series of interviews. He basically just interviews every single person because you're, you're stuck on a train, you know what I mean? Like, not's gonna, not a lot's gonna be happening. But I loved that. <laughs> I loved it so much because it allows you to really play detective and try to piece everything together. And the, as this goes on, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but you start thinking like, holy shit, what? Like, there's a lot going on here. And I think, you know, as this is one of my first murder mysteries, this has an incredible ending. It's up there with like Murder of Roger Ackroyd for me with the Agatha Christie's I've read so far with the reveal, especially I think as like a newbie. If you're just getting into murder mysteries, this is a great one to read because the ending, it, oh. I'm so happy I never got spoiled for this in my years leading up to reading this because it is a great ending. You kind of go, girl. <laughs> Ooh, it's so good. It's so clever. And I love when Agatha, Miss Agatha gives me an ending like that. Next we have House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Clune. This is like a found family, a cozy fantasy story. I'm sure you all know what it's about. We're following Linus Baker who goes to this orphanage and he's supposed to kind of be checking up on how it's being run but it's, you know, it's a found family and the love <laughs> they have there. This is just a hug in a book. I just love it. <laughs> Next, okay, this one is a little bit controversial because it's lower down than you guys would expect. I think you would expect it to be one of the upper two tiers, but it's The Guest List by Lucy Foley. What? Now, this was once my favorite book of a year. <laughs> But I am not, I don't know if I, I reread it. Okay, this is one of the first murder mysteries I ever read. So I love it for what it did for me and like the path it put me down. We're at this wedding on this remote, should I put this higher? I don't know, just this could be higher, okay? But whatever. We're following this wedding at this remote Irish island and uh, there's a murder that happens and we know at the beginning, but we don't really know who's murdered and then we go back in time and we're kind of catching up with time. And it's really, really, I mean, I love Lucy Foley, but I reread this last year and I don't know, I mean, can a murder mystery like ever especially one that you really went into so blind and not really knowing the genre can it ever really match up on a reread I didn't feel like it it really you know <laughs> was quite as mind-blowing on a reread but that's because I knew everything so I don't, I don't know if that was fair of me to do I loved the writing I love Lucy Freddy's writing she writes horrible rich characters so so well <laughs> Like, so good. I thought the reveals and how this book unfurled was amazing. Maybe this should be higher. I'm talking myself into it. But these are all my favourite books, you know? So, it's tough. Then we have A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. In this, we're following Pip as she tries to solve a cold case in her town. This is YA mixed media. I love it. 
right, Holly Jackson. We're just pretending Five Survive doesn't exist. <laughs> I love this series. I love it so much. I think it's incredible. This first one, the way that the mystery again unfurls, the uh, mixed media elements are so fun and used in such a fun way. Throughout this series, she uses things like Fitbits or like, I don't know, location, I don't know, so many interesting things that I think she just does so well. And I love Pip as a character and being able to see Pip grow. I think this is just a great solid YA murder mystery. It's a very compelling case, her ties to the case, we've got a girl who went missing, is presumed dead. Her boyfriend uh, supposedly confessed and unalived himself a couple days later, but Pip isn't convinced that that's the case. And I just thought, oh, the way that this unfurled, the characters we meet, the relationships, it's so good. Okay, I'm like doubting myself. I've left two places in this category for books from the Bear and the Nightingale series, but I can't remember which ones are my favorite. Um, can we just say three for two? The rules don't apply. I feel like The Winter of the Witch used to be my favorite. But I'm gonna go with the Bear and the Nightingale and Girl in the Tower. So this was one of the first fantasy series I ever fell in love with, girl. I swear to fucking God, what is going on with you? But yeah, this is one of my first favorite fantasy series. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. We're following Vasya in kind of old Russia as she, it's difficult with this series not to spoil anything. Um, she can kind of see household spirits. It's very much Russian folklore. And there's also the Winter King uh, who appears in this story and kind of helps. <laughs> I don't know. I love this series. I love it so dearly. I reread the whole series once and it held up and I don't know, it's just so special to me. I love it. Here's the thing, perhaps it's lower than it once would have been because it's not the most complex fantasy. I've read like, you know, Jade Legacy is much more complex, but the vibes, the winter vibes, the writing, oh, it's immaculate. It's so good. And I can't wait for what Catherine Arden is gonna come out with next. Cause after this, she wrote like a horror middle grade series, which I did enjoy, but I just want like a YA or adult from her again. I'm craving it and I'm very excited to see what she comes out with. Okay, so now we're in the 15 to six. So we're in a high, we've jumped up a tier. <laughs> I'm excited to chat about these. So first we've got The Bullet and Miss by Richard Osman. I've talked about this a shit ton <laughs> lately. So I'm not gonna talk about it much. This is the third in the Thursday Murder Club series. You know, you can probably guess we're gonna see number one later on. So we'll talk about it more then. You naughty, naughty. You teasing me, you naughty, naughty. <laughs> But this was a great continuation of the series for me. Rich Dosman, I can't believe how amazing his books are. I generally can't. I found out the other day, the first two books were the most two borrowed books from British libraries last year. How crazy is that? It's doing so well. My murder mystery faves, I love them so much. I've given the whole series five stars. It's incredible. My, oh, the, okay, we'll talk about it later because we're, we're gonna talk about number one later. But the book that the miss is on here, okay? <laughs> Then we have a book that I still don't, well, I say I don't own. I finally bought it. I was thinking about this list. I was like, why have I not bought a copy of this book? Because usually if I listen to a book or an audiobook, I just don't buy a copy. But I'm like, Megan, it's time. So, Sadie by Courtney Summers. Oh my God, this book. <laughs> so we're following Sadie, whose sister was murdered. And half of the book is Sadie trying to find out what happened to her sister, who did this to her sister. And then Sadie has gone missing in the present day. And there's a podcast <laughs> um, and a podcast host trying to tell the story of what has happened to Sadie, trying to find out what's happened to her. And this book was incredible. This book is incredible. I feel like it was pretty like, you know, an originator of putting a podcast in a book. I feel like it wasn't done a lot before that. And like, tapping into the nature of true crime and it's full cast, the audiobook's great, it's full cast, so like when the host interviews people, we get different voices for them. Courtney Summers, right, you guys know that Courtney Summers is one of my favourite authors ever, okay? And um, I, <laughs> the hurt and the pain that this book caused me, my God. Everything hurts and I'm dying. I was thinking about it the other day, actually, and I was remembering when I read, when I listened to the audiobook for the first time, and before that, when I was listening to audiobooks, I would always be doing something. But I remember for the ending of Sadie, I just sat there on my bed and just listened. And I was like, and I immediately stormed into my mum's room and was like, you don't know what I just read. Oh my God. 
lot. I was like sobbing. It was a lot. So I love this. It was a book that got me into audiobooks. It introduced me to Courtney Summers. That was a loud slap. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I love Sadie and I'm, my copy is arriving in the next couple of days, finally. Oh shit. Oh shit. I just realised I haven't put a book on here. Oh shit. Okay, we have a problem. <laughs> When making this list, I only looked at past years. I didn't take into account any of my reading this year. Cause I was like, I won't have one of my top 20. I do. There is a top 25. Um, okay. This is going to be top 26. <laughs> we'll talk about that book in a sec after this one. One of my favorite fantasy books ever is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I love her. <laughs> This book is, again, very difficult to describe. We find, we meet a guy, protagonist, who finds a book that something that happened to him is written in it, but he can't understand, like, how is that possible? Because there was no one there when it happened. And we go into this world of, like, books and craziness. And I don't even know how to describe it. It was so long ago I read this. But Erin Morgenson's writing does something to me. It does something to me. I love Erin Morgenson's writing. It's gonna be for you or not. I'm waiting, right? Erin Morgenson only has two books out. I'm waiting. It's probably gonna be like at least another five years, but I'm waiting. <laughs> Just the magic and the whimsy and the, I need to reread this. I need to reread this. I need to reread this. <laughs> I love it so much. I think it's so magical. I This was, again, at the very early days of me getting back into reading. I had no idea who Erin Morgenstern was when I picked this up. I thought I discovered a book. Like, no one knows about this. It wasn't the case. I fell in love. I don't know how else to describe it to you. I fell in love. I loved it so much. Okay, the book that I forgot to put on here was Legends and Lattes by Travis Bowdry. Yes, it's new. <laughs> We have a bit of recency bias, but I adored this. So in this, we're following an orc who wants to leave her lives of adventuring behind and starts up a coffee shop. And it is the most cute, <laughs> wholesome, lovely, comforting book you have ever read. It is incredible. I think the writing is incredible. It is so feel good. It is so lovely. It is so, oh, <laughs> thimble. The character Thimble, a love of my life, love of my life. Just the descriptions of like coffee and baking in this. I can't, I loved this. It is incredible. Obviously it's been everywhere, but if you haven't read it yet, I'm like, so 26 favorite books of all time, apparently. Next we have another book. Oh my God, I've been talking for so long already. We're like halfway through, holy shit. <laughs> Should we speed it up a little bit? Yeah. Next we have this fucking what is going on with you do you have like i don't understand have i dropped it or something one of the books i read a very long time ago that i love dearly seven husbands evan hugo i only speak too long about this we're following hollywood starlet evan hugo by the way i have always wanted to read another book set in old hollywood and i just can't why is there not more i think siren queen by nevo on my tbr is i want more i want more books set in old hollywood what a what a vibe like there's so much to draw from, <laughs> from this era. Anyways, we're following the story told by Evelyn Hugo of her life and of her seven husbands and her one true love. And God, what a book, what a moment. Taylor Jenkins Reid, you guys know, I have given five stars to every single Taylor Jenkins Reid that I have ever read. I love this book and Evelyn Hugo and Taylor Jenkins Reid so much. God, what a book, what a book, what a book. <laughs> What a book. What a time. That's what I need to say. Then we have, I think, the only romance on this list, and that is The Love Hypothesis by Ellie Hazelwood. I don't want to hear <laughs> any, any criticism. I love The Love Hypothesis dearly. I love it dearly, okay? My favorite romance ever. Yes, it's Kyler and fan fiction. We're going to talk about that, okay? We're following these two scientists as they fall in love. It is the best, okay? I love Ali Hayeswood. You can attack me. I don't care. Yes, her writing is fanfic -y. That's why I like it. I grew up reading fanfic. That was my life. <laughs> I grew up reading One Direction fanfic. <laughs> so, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. It did something to me. It ignited me loving romance. And Ali Hayeswood... It will forever be my favorite romance author. I'm saying it and I'm saying it now. <laughs> then we have another from the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series, As Good As Dead. It ranks a bit above a Good Girl's Guide to... <laughs> it ranks a bit above a Good Girl's Guide to Murder for me. Listen, this book is Marmite. People will love it or hate it. I think it is one of the boldest, ballsiest things an author has ever done 
with an end of a series that I have read. Like, it goes there, right? So you're following Pip, she's a schoolgirl, she's a goody girl, you know, whatever. And over the course of the series, she's been struggling with what she's doing. Like, does she, is she doing the right thing with what she's doing and uncovering these cases and solving these cases? And she gets these letters in this one, this last one, saying, who will look for you when you're the one who disappears? Seems she has a stalker. The like wireless printer turns on and people are printing stuff into her house from somewhere outside. And then this book takes a turn. Oh, how the tables have turned. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but it takes a turn. And if you've read, I, the way this made me feel, we've got another book coming up like this, tense, 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 tense. It is incredible. It is a work of art. It is high, high, high stakes. And I loved it. I loved it. But some people don't like it, but I think, <sighs> incredible. And some people moan about the ending of this and how it's open and like, oh, what happens? Have some reading comprehension. It's obvious what happens. <laughs> obvious how this ends okay they're like oh i wanted this to happen but i don't know if it will it does okay it does read oh. anyways i loved it i loved it i loved it i think it's incredible <laughs> then we've got my other favorite graphic novel other than t dragon society it's heartstopper okay i'm shocked this is shocking I've put Heartstopper 1 on this list, but I genuinely don't know which my favourite is. So we'll just we'll just say this one, but it could be any in the series, if we're honest. You all know what this is about now because of the Netflix show, Nick and Charlie fall in love. Whatever, it's about these two guys falling in love. This is what I'm saying, I like cute graphic novels. So cute and wholesome and lovely and wonderful. You guys, it's incredible. It's incredible. <laughs> it's incredible. I love it. I love it so much. Gosh. I liked the TV show, I didn't love it as much as I love this. Just Alice Oseman, you do something to me. I like when I read a YA book and it's set in high school and these characters fall in love and it's realistic to what it was like, you know? Sometimes I feel like characters act away, I'm like, girl, that would never happen. Like the nervousness, that like falling in love when you're like 15, 16 or whatever, how old they are in this, like is terrible. Like it fills you with a fucking, I didn't eat for days. <laughs> it's horrible. Like you you feel nervous and anxious and like, does they like me? You know what I mean? It's a completely different ball game to, as an adult. But yeah, we know I love Heartstopper. The best. Then we have the other book that I was mentioning in relation to As Good As Dead, and that is No Exit by Taylor Adams. I always say for me, I think this is the a perfect thriller. It's a perfect thriller. So we're following, is her name Darcy? I wanna say her name's Darcy. Darby. Sorry. She's driving through this blizzard. She gets snowed in at the service station and some other people there as well. And she goes out into the car park at one point and finds out that there is a child locked up in one of the vans outside. And this book. I have never felt more sick, more apprehensive, more tense. It's horrible. It is the perfect thriller. You enter this book, it is level 100 from the get-go. Like, it's not, it's not gonna go down. It is level 100 from the get-go. I think it's incredible. Again, this was um, adapted on Disney Plus, actually. I liked the adaptation. I didn't like some of the the character changes they made, I thought they were unnecessary, but it does do a good job of, particularly towards the end, having that same, like, uh, but it's not as good as the book. The book is incredible. <laughs> it's incredible. And then finally in this tier, we have numbers two and three in the, what are these called again? <laughs> My favorite series ever. Oh, the extraordinary adventures of the Athena club. That's why, because it's complicated. Listen, for a long time I said, we were not seeing number one, so we know that's happening. This is my favorite series of all time. For a long time I said number two was my favorite in the series, but I haven't reread this. I've reread number one. I keep meaning to reread this and just not getting around to it. So I'm putting it in this tier because I mean, let's be honest. I could put all three of these in the top tier, but I decided to show some restraint, okay? So know that when number one is on the top tier, it's doing some heavy lifting because these are kind of there with it as well. In this, we're following these monstrous girls, uh, the Athena Club, and by the time in these two, it's a found family. It's the best thing ever. We've got fucking, you know, Dracula showing up. Uh, I love it. I think these girls, Oh gosh, I always say I want 10 more. I always say if I win the lottery, the first thing I'm doing is set, setting up a publishing house and just paying Theodore Goss to write more of these books. You may say I'm a dreamer.
I love the way it's written. It's written by one of the girls, Catherine, and the other girls will cut in when uh, <laughs> they don't agree with something. Uh, we're about to talk about this series again, but I love it. And I always say number two is my favourite, I think, but I haven't put it in there because I haven't reread it. But it's so long and it has no business. It's like 800 pages. It has no business being as long, but it means I get extra time with the girls. So I do not care. <laughs> Okay, now we're into my top five books of all time. This is tricky, okay? But I think I sta- I think, <laughs> I think that I stand by this. I'm saying it now. I think that I stand by this. Okay, so this book was not my favorite, but my second favorite book of 2021. So I had a pretty good reading year in 2021 because number one is on here as well. But this was my second favourite and it is The Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow. Oh my gosh. It has so many fa my favourite things in this, right? Imagine beautiful lyrical writing a la Erin Morganston. We've got sisters. I love sisters. <laughs> I don't know why. We've got witches. They're sisters who are witches. They're in, uh, this is in 1893 in New Salem, I want to say. Yes. And it's about them uh, they're kind of like wrapped up in the story of the suffragists who are kind of campaigning at the time. This book, oh my God, what a what a moment, what a moment. I need to reread this one as well. I keep saying this, but mm, yeah, <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Sisters Who Are Witches. I don't get like the writing, incredible. Storyline, incredible. Vibes, incredible. Everything, incredible. I don't even know how to describe this book to you. The relationship that you see between these sisters grow over time. I don't even have words for it. I don't even, I don't even know what to say to you. <laughs> what to say to you. It is incredible. 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 Loves of my life. I love them. I love this story. Then we have another one that I spoke about earlier, The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. Okay, it's here. It's in my top five. We are following these group of friends who live in a retirement home and they have a Thursday murder club where they try to solve cold cases. And murder hands up on their doorstep, baby. It's so good. These books are so funny, so heartwarming, such a incredible look at the human race and human nature and what life is and what life, what it means to live life. Like it's amazing. I can't tell you how much I love these books. They always leave me feeling hopeful, but at the end of the day, they're a great murder mystery as well. I love them. <laughs> I do understand why if you're from the US or Canada or just not from the UK, I'm not saying you're not gonna love this because plenty of people have given this five stars who don't live in the UK, but it is very much British humor and a lot of British references, like in terms of like celebrities or like, I'm just thinking the bullet miss, like when it talks about local news, like what our local news is like, like you just have to be there. <laughs> Like, to get it. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of niche British references. But I, that's not to say you can't enjoy it outside of that. This book, oh, this one. I've just remembered some things that happened in this one. Let's not talk about it. It made me sob. This is what trauma looks like. <laughs> sob. Because at the end of the day, right, I'm not going to spoil anything about this series, but, like, we're following elderly characters. So there is a lot about the, the fragility of life at the end of the day. And that's why it makes you want to get out there and just live life. Because it reminds you... Like, we're only here once. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And, um, yeah. Wow, what a moment. Incredible, incredible book. These books are also super popular in Germany, apparently. I remember him saying that, like, top of the list in Germany. So, I don't know. But I love them. Okay, the next book. <laughs> I don't know how much I stand by this. But I feel like, because of what it did for me, and... It's the whole reason we're here today. I have not reread this. I will reread it at one point, but I have to put it on here, okay? And it is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. The other day I got a comment. It was like, have you ever read The Secret History? I think you'd love it. And I'm like, girl. <laughs> so those of you who don't know, I stopped reading for many years. I got super consumed with school. I was that kind of girl. I was a nerd. <laughs> and I stopped doing a lot of stuff I love and I stopped reading. And this was the book that got me back into reading. I read, I think I read about 10 books in 2018. I was reading a little bit, but then I read this in 2019. I went on to read like 80 books. It made me fall back in love with reading. I've never reread it. It's been four years, okay? And my reading has blown up since then. I never, I mean, even when I used to read when I was younger, I'd probably only read like only, but I'd probably read like 20 books a year, maybe. So my reading taste and what I know I love has exploded and I'm nervous to reread this because I don't know how I'd react to it. But there's like this friendship group and there's, what they study, I don't even know. 
can't even remember. Is it Latin? Something like that at university. One of, we know at the beginning that there's a death, a murder perhaps within this friendship group. I vividly still remember reading this. I remember sitting on the sofa, like at New Year's around that time and just being so, I couldn't tear my eyes off of it. I loved it. And so it's the reason I'm here today. It's the reason I'm making YouTube videos. Yes, I don't know how it holds up. Yes, I think there's been some discussion of some problematic elements, but I feel like with this book, it's like you're following terrible characters, right? <laughs> you are, you are following, and it was written a long time ago. It was written, what, 1990s, I wanna say? 19, like 92 would be my guess. 1992, oh my God. Look at her. So, I mean, you have to take that into account, but you're following awful characters. These are horrible people. This book means a lot to me and I'm terrified to reread it because I don't know how I'm gonna react to it. So I don't mention it a lot anymore because I don't know to what extent I stand by it, but it was my favorite book. For a very long time, I said this was my favorite book. Is it still? I don't know. No one's to do. Petrified. <laughs> Petrified. I don't know, but. <laughs> It's the whole reason we're here today. So there we have it. Then we have my favorite book of last year and that is Babel Babel by Laura of Crying. I, this book, wow, incredible. No notes, incredible. We're following, I seem to like university. I do like university. I do love a good university setting. We are following these group of translators at Oxford and we're in a fantastical world where there's like, mm. <laughs> the magic system is powered on translation and silver working with that translation. And I just loved this. I love footnotes, <laughs> but I just thought Eye of Queen's writing in this was incredible. The writing, the development, what this book means, what it's saying about history and about present day and about colonialism and racism and everything. I don't even know how to describe it. I love this. And I cannot tell you enough how much I love this book. I think it was amazing. I can't wait for everything R.F. Kwang is gonna write in the future. I think she's like, one of the best writers of our present day, in my opinion. Tom, my boyfriend, has just started reading. He was never a reader, but he's just read the Wolf Hall trilogy. And then after that, he's gonna read Pachinko, because I, I got him that for Christmas, because I thought he would enjoy it. And then he's reading this, and I'm very excited to see what he thinks of it. <laughs> Nervous, because, you know, <laughs> He, he's, he can be a scathing critic if he doesn't like something, but this book is near and dear to my heart and it's gonna be a favorite forever to come. And then the final book, oh my God, this is like the longest I've ever spoken, but this is my favorite book, so can you blame me? Holy shit. Oh my God, that actually made my heart hurt. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, final book, Strange Case, The Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss. This is my favorite series. I need to reread the number two and three. I could reread them forever though. Like I love these so much, I have to kind of, keep myself away from them a bit because I could just read these books over and over again. I cannot tell you how much I need more. So I can't remember what I told you, but we're following daughters or female versions of classic men from Victorian literature. We've got Mary Jekyll and Diana Hyde. We've got Catherine Moreau, Justine Frankenstein, Beatrice Rappuccini, and it's them solving mysteries together. Sherlock and Watson are there, but they're kind of in the background. The girls are the star of the show. And it's, I love Victorian, right? I've always loved Victorian history since I was a kid. I was super into Victorian history. So I love a book set in Victorian times. And I think it's, it's such a great setting for like mysteries because it's like dirty, dingy, like Jack the Ripper, like, you know what I mean? And this, these, these girls, I've never, I'm not a big like character person. Like, you know, when like people run fan accounts, like, you know, that's great for you. But like, I, I can't imagine, I've never read many books where like, I love the characters. I'm much more of like a plot and writing girl, but these characters, I would fight to the death for. I need 10 more, Theodore Goss. I'm gonna ring her up. I'm actually done. I'm actually gonna write her. I've never contacted her cause I'm kind of like afraid. Like, oh my gosh. Like I'm actually like a crazy fan, but <laughs> I'm gonna be like, please write more. <laughs> I just love it so much. These books are my perfect books. Mystery, Victorian, these girls. I love how it reclaims women's place within classic Victorian literature and uplift these women and makes them the star of the show the best it's the best it's the best so there oh my god i actually feel sick that was my top 26 <laughs> books of all time because we had to add in legends and lattes it is it has solidified itself in my i wonder if any other books this year oh my god how exciting i wonder if more books this year will solidify themselves in my top 25 books i'm hoping i just i'm feeling more and more of a time i do get to know my reading taste to be fair from last year there wasn't a ton of new favorites so we do need to go on the hunt and get more but um yeah i hope you enjoyed this video it was that's this is a long video 
this is going to be, I mean, I've got 45 minutes of raw footage. I don't know what I will have gotten it down to. This is a long video. <laughs> So thank you for watching. Uh, if you've gotten to the end, please tell me what your some of your favourite books of all time are. I would love to know and comment a star emoji. You guys, thank you for watching. I love you. <laughs> and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.